what's going on guys and welcome back to the channel my apologies that it's been uh, a little bit you know a couple of weeks since i've released a video normally we try to at least do one once a week however we got a little bit busy putting together some laboratories um we're moving not only in the united states but also across the entire world uh, so it's very very interesting how fast this is picking up so if you feel like you got in late i'm here to tell you that you are in fact actually still early today we are going to be finishing up our hydrocarbon to vape pen episode this one will be covering uh cutting filling and terpenes and um, I've got a lot to cover, but we're going to keep it short, sweet, and to the meat. Without any further ado, I am Grim from WKU Consulting. Let's go ahead and dive right on into it. Thank you for returning, guys. I always appreciate your support. If you could... Go ahead, like, subscribe, and a comment on the channel. This helps the algorithm. Uh, there's not many people out there giving you this type of information, and it is crazy because we have approximately 78,000 views across the channel, and out of that, about 1.8 thousand subscribers. So, uh, slightly disappointing. There's a lot of people out there that are getting this information. If you could do me a favor, we're not charging you for any of this. We're never going to monetize these videos, uh, make you spend a bunch of time watching stupid ads and things like that. But you can support me by subscribing to the channel and letting YouTube know that this is a channel worth giving to other viewers so that as I'm helping you, maybe subconsciously or even consciously, you could help someone else. That's my spew for the day. Hydrocarbon to vape pen episode 7, cutting, filling, and terpenes. WKU Consulting, that is us. Um, so here we go. Let's go ahead and dive into it here. We've got appropriate cutting agents. If you've been watching the videos, uh, if you haven't been watching the videos, go back, watch these videos that are popping up above. That way you can go through the entire process and figure out how to get your distillate to a clean, pure oil. That way this will be the last step in your process. So appropriate cutting agents, we're going to need to make that viscous distillate um, be free flowing oil so that we can vape it in something like a ceramic card or something like that that we're giving out into the public. That means that we're going to have to cut it. Now also if you're too hot in your THC that means probably you're cutting it also uh, but I'm not really here for you. That's not really what I'm going to teach uh, today. I am here for you but that's not what the purpose of this video is. Um, this is more on just creating a beautiful terpene cutting agent profile so that your vape pens function cohesively, right? So if you're making diamonds, uh, one of my favorite cutting agents to actually produce and prevent crystallization and a free-flowing oil is I really like the diamond sauce. Uh, so you've got a terp sauce that pours off from the top of your diamond mining that is great for adding to vape pens uh, if that's what you decide. Other cutting agents are propylene glycol. That's the one that I probably use the most. Terpenes are considered a cutting agent. You have vegetable glycerin. Uh, when you get too runny, you can actually add propylene glycol and vegetable glycerin, homogenize that in an ultrasonic homogenizer, excuse me, and that will help thicken things up a little bit. Also, MCT oil. Uh, I have used MCT oil in the past, but I'll be honest, uh, I'm not the biggest fan of it. Um, I just don't really like the harsh, uh, you know, text or the harsh hit in the lungs when I vape in, in MCT oil. And I've also gotten that from a couple of different uh, people around the industry. It's been a little bit of time since I've used cannabis personally or for myself, mostly just dabble in the chemistry of it. But I have an extensive group of people that are under control studies uh, that, you know, we do blind studies and they don't really like the MCT oil as much either. So that's just neither here nor there. I'm going to um, harp on propylene glycol uh, because that's the one that I use. So that's the one that I can teach you how to use 
uh, relatively simply. So many people have negative thoughts about propylene glycol, but the honest truth is we haven't seen a single death from any reputable company or registered any adverse side effects in any studies. Now, that's not saying anything because back in the 1950s, they were putting ads out that if you were pregnant and stressed out, that the best way that you could relieve your stress was a Marlboro cigarette. Well, now we know that Marlboro cigarettes will kill you. So that's neither here nor there. Maybe there just hasn't been enough time and or research attributed to this specific case study. However, so far, we have not seen people have been vaping for, you know, a long time now, many, many years. And uh, there's not people just keeling over and dying or or anything like that. We do hear of some popcorn lungs and things like that. But mostly those are irreputable companies that have been adding strange things into their vape pen. Or, you know, <laughs> in Texas, it was people just straight up manufacturing some bathroom carts and sell them to the public. Also, neither here nor there. But propylene glycol is actually used in nebulizers or breathing treatments, albuterol breathing treatments, uh, to promote the opening of the bronchial tubes with people with asthma and HVAC systems due to its microbial properties all across the medical industry. So that's not saying that it's the same thing as sitting in a room breathing microbial uh, propylene glycol through an HVAC system. That's not saying it's the same thing as inhaling super concentrated PG into your lungs. I'm just saying that... Um, there are many use cases and some very medical professionals in the industry are using propylene glycol. And I can almost guarantee you if you're smoking on a vape right now, like right now, got a little bit of Juul. I'm not completely sure what is in this Juul as far as diluents and everything. But I can almost guarantee you that there is some propylene glycol and vegetable glycerin inside of there. Um, also, um, I got to figure out if I'm going to get sued first. But I'm going to be teaching you how to make a cannabis jewel pod. Can you see it? Here we go. Jewel pod. I'm going to be teaching you how to make a cannabis jewel pod if I figure out a way uh, to do that without inhibiting repercussions or contracting repercussions, right? Okay, so the by weight recipe is fully winterized, decarbed, highly concentrated distillate is mixed with by weight. 5% propylene glycol and 5% terpene choice. I like organic terpenes from true terpenes. Those are the ones that, um, you know, there, there's also some others, Floraplex and a couple of other uh, pretty reputable companies that are used across the industry. Um, I, I'm not affiliated with true terpenes in any way. They don't pay me to say this, uh, but I do. I have found that their organic line and also their live resin rye, uh, line has... You, you, and people that I know or make vape pens for say that they really like it and um, it, it's got feeling in it. You know, it, it's a it's a true terpene profile. It's organic and it comes with characteristics that you would expect from a naturally derived terpene. So the SOP, heat your desired distillate to 45 degrees Celsius using a gentle heating method to inhibit degradation. So you can use a water bath or a convection oven. Some websites that you'll go when you're looking for terpenes will recommend using a microwave oven. Please don't do this. I do not have any scientific evidence to say that microwaves are harmful in any way. I would just say, bro, don't microwave your distillate. I mean, have you ever met a super healthy person that eats microwave TV dinners every day? I don't think so either. But I'm just saying, um, also, you can't really control uniformly the heat and we want to inhibit any degradation that's going to happen. So a nice, gentle heating method is uh, desirable for this process. Now, next, mix in 5% by weight propylene glycol into desired distillate feedstock. This can be done manually or by an ultrasonic homogenizer if you fancy. You can go ahead and use that homogenizer as well. Also, the dab tools, depending on how small uh, most of these videos are covering a benchtop laboratory setup. So if you've got different uh, dab tools or dental tools that you're using to pick out particulate and things like that, these can be used to mix just fine. Now, if you've got five gallon buckets, maybe you want to throw you a, a paddle bit on a drill. <laughs> so next, mix in 5% of your terpene mixture 
into what you've just mixed as far as propylene glycol. My favorite, I'll be honest, uh, when I was uh, utilizing marijuana was strawberry banana. I love strawberry banana. I love the strawberry banana sativa blend. Um, I just loved it, you know. So that's that's me. Um, and, you know, maybe that's not you, but here we go. Mix in 5% of your terpene mixture. Make sure a clean homogenization has occurred. If the vape oil is too thick, an extra 2% of PG terp combo can be added. Um, so you don't want a very, very super runny uh, distillate because it's going to make your vape pen leak. And nobody likes that, especially when it gets into your mouth or it ruins the cartridge completely. Um, also, you can't be too thick because then it's not going to vaporize properly. So make sure an extra clean homogenization has occurred. Place your now e-juice into your hot water filling bath uh, that will be in your, um, this will be in your, um, I lost my words, your hot shot or something like that, but basically your cart filler. Next, fill your vape cart to appropriate levels, then cap and package based on the cartridge manufacturer specifications, right? Might need to torque some down and others just a hand tight uh, lid is appropriate. Okay, so things to consider. Number one, a reputable cartridge company. Um, think about who you're using. See if they've got, and that's not to say that new and innovative ideas are not the future because they absolutely are. I myself uh, was a small business with no reviews and uh, no social media clout or anything like that. And it was difficult running this type of business to get anybody to... Um, utilize me I say it was difficult the industry pretty much searched me out but it, I, I understand that without any long-time reviews it's hard for an up-and-running company to kind of get their name out there and they might have a really good product and that's okay you can research that uh, but a lot of the time when um, my money is on the line I like to use somebody that somebody else has used and uh, somebody else has kind of vetted, if you will. Um, so a reputable cartridge company, uh, the last thing you want is to make 10,000 vape pens and then find out that their cartridges are fugazi, okay? So take time mixing your ratios. It's better to have too thick and need to add a little bit of cutting agent than too runny and run the risk of a cart leak. So just take good time, you know, if you need to smart start with smart if you need to start with small batches, uh, you know, 100 grams or so to just really get your tech down. Uh, that way, when you start scaling, you can kind of scale appropriately. Just take time mixing small batches and really figure out, hone in your uh, diluent or terpene ratio to distillate ratio and find what's going to work for you. Do some case studies and put your carts on a shelf, you know, in a cold a dark location or even in a warm location. See how your distillate is reacting to the environment over time and that will save you a long headache in the future by taking a little headache in the short term. Spend a little extra cash on a good cart filler. This makes life much easier in the long run. Uh, so if you're hand filling or things, that's okay. I understand sometimes we're strapped for cash, but for a few bucks, you can get a pretty good cart filler with an automated uh, method, a good water bath that keeps everything nice and warm, makes cleaning it and emptying it out pretty easy. If you're making CBD carts, you may need to add significantly more terps and or diluent to prevent crystallization. We all know CBD likes to crystallize pretty heavily, so um, it, a 5% ratio might not be good for you. Like I said, take time and do your case study. So take time to formulate a delicious terpene profile. Use as many natural ingredients as possible. Terpenes have a significant impact on the way that your vape cart hits. You might see somebody with a 70% THC ratio that absolutely can obliterate their consumer, where somebody with a 90% ratio just doesn't hit the same, you know? And a lot of that boils down to the terpene profile. 
terpenes do a big thing. And with saying that, let's go ahead and get into those. Terpenes are also major biosynthetic building blocks. Steroids, for example, are derivatives of the triterpene squalene. Terpenes and terpenoids are also the primary constituents of the essential oils of many types of plants and flowers. In plants, terpenes and terpenoids are important mediators of ecological interactions. For example, they play a role in plant defense against herbivory, disease resistance, attraction of mutalysists, as well as pollinators, and they potentially, as well as potentially plant-to-plant -plant communication. It's amazing. They appear to play roles as antifeedants. So antifeedants are basically a terpene that is released or tastes a certain way, an aroma that keeps uh, predators from devouring that plant. Other functions of terpenoids include cell growth modulation and plant elongation, light harvestation, and photoprotection, membrane permea permeability, and fluidity control. So terpenes are playing a huge, a huge um, contributing factor in biosynthesis reactivity, okay? So higher amounts of terpenes are released by trees in warmer weather where they may function as a natural mechanism of cloud seeding. The clouds reflect sunlight, allowing the forest temperature to regulate. So terpene research, man, I'm telling you, these have a huge effect. If you ever hit that bay pin, you're like, dang, this hits different just hits different, chances are that they've taken time in formulating their terpenoid profile. Some insects use terpenes as a form of defense. For example, termites of the subfamily, can't say that, to ward off predatory insects through the use of a specialized mechanism called fontalinor gun, which ejects a resinous mixture of terpenes. Bad guys, beware. We might hit you with the Fontalenor gun. You see what I'm saying? Terpenes all day. Terpenes all day. I know I know one of y'all have watched the video. Terp profile, man. Okay. So terp profile. You have a couple of different aromas. Um, you know, they can be labeled down into about six different aroma pr profiles. You've got citrus, floral, diesel earthy, herbal, and fruity. Now, your effects, you also have effects from terpenes. Your effects can include energy, focus, calming, relaxive, and creative. Now, these are recommendations. They're not to be followed to a laser T. I'm just saying over the years, this is what I have found for my clients, consumers, and companies alike that when you put these three together, being the distillate and the terpene, uh, profile or these two together that you really encompass a full effect ratio you know you can really contribute and add to both the cannabinoid and the terpene and how it's reacting uh, biologically inside of the human body so for cbd i recommend an herbal calming terpene profile. A lot of people are using CBD for pain management. They're stressed. Their heart rate is up. They're just trying to relax. So maybe calm them down. Give them a nice herbal uh, uh, aroma to go through. And then the CBD will do what the CBD does. For sativa, a citrus or diesel and a creative terpene profile. A lot of artists really like this sativa blend when they're writing music or painting or sculpting or something of that nature. They really like to draw, to sit and with, with something that's like a, a lemony or an orangey uh, or even a diesel -y with a creative, creative unlock kind of terpene profile. I find that they like that. For indica, uh, a relaxing fruity terpene profile. So strawberry, banana, or a mango, something like that that's going to bring a relaxing terpene profile to the indica, which is going to, you know, do its best to couch lock you as well. So almost like a nice dessert, you know. You've had a long day. You're going to relax, sit, chill, watch a movie, get you some fruity indica and just have a ball okay for delta 8 i like a floral focus driven terpene profile the delta 8 psychoactive effects are there but i like this floral focus terpene profile maybe uh i'm i'm into the psychological aspect 
Um, and I, I don't want to just get as obliterated as possible like some sativas will do, but I'm looking for another calm medium. Maybe I'm a housewife that wants to clean the entire house in one day and just wants something to kind of take the edge off like a glass of wine. Then I'd be looking for a floral focus driven terpene profile. For CBN, I'm trying to whoop pass out, right? So I want an earthy, relaxing terpene profile, something that reminds me of the Oregon woodlands, something that reminds me of a calm stream flowing down uh, over rocks and maybe waves crashing into the ocean. Just a real in tune with the earth, relaxing, calm, birds in the night sky type of profile with that CBN to just one, two, three, KO, double punch. Okay, for HHC, now these are gonna be more of your spiritual type of psychoactive properties. I like a floral energy terpene profile. Get the heart rate up a little bit. Uh, start to consider why are we here in the universe? What does this all mean? You know, that type of thing. Blending it in with some sort of aroma that reminds you of uh, um, daffodils or daisies or something like that. Really just trying to figure out the soul of man if you're into that type of thing. Um, and there you have it. Those are my recommendations for terpene profiles. And also, I, I, I want to go ahead and show you. So here... Here is uh, my favorite filling machine. This is the A10 Hot Shot. You can get these in all type of different uh, varieties and sizes from cool jars. Uh, so go ahead and check them out. Like I said, I'm not affiliated with any of these companies. We have companies try to pay us. Uh, if they make a good product, we'll let them pay us. We'll mention them. Um, but if they don't, then we just don't mention them no matter how much money is involved. So we're not in the business of selling our soul. If we tell you something is nice, it's because we have extensive experience uh checking it out right so so I, I really like the a10 hot shot that's something for you to consider it doesn't break the bank but it's also not uh something that you pay a few pennies before and expect to break right so got that nice heated water circulator in there for keeping everything nice and hot uh, so everything kind of is fluid your your foot pedal for filling uh, So, you know, you can you can work this thing pretty rapidly and then once again true terpenes are probably my favorite right now They have an incredible line of terpenes natural terpenes organic terpenes live resin terpenes alchemy terpenes Whatever you're looking for you can find those uh, out there and To be honest guys that is a bit of all that I have for you today. I hope you found this informative and please stay tuned for the next videos. Like, subscribe, do it for me, do it for your fellow man that's looking for the information that YouTube is hiding. It's been a blessing and a privilege, nay, an honor to be able to consult and teach with you today. My name is Grim. Peace out.